next presenter, we have uh, Coach John Doerr from Concordia University. He's in this weekend with the Stingers. They're taking on the Westman and Bisons uh, tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, by all means, you're welcome to stay around. You've got your Westman pass to catch some great CIS men's basketball tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, over his uh, coaching career, Coach John Doerr has been with Concordia Stingers the last 20 seasons. Over this time, he's taken the Stingers to the national tournament 10 times, finishing second in 95 and 2005, and winning the national title in 1990. Uh, he's been named the outstanding coach in Quebec uh, at the Quebec Student Federation Conference on 11 occasions, and he was named the men's basketball coach of the year by the CIS in uh, 1991. Uh, he's also been at the helm of several national teams, including the uh, Canadian entries in the World University Games and the Maccabea Games as well. Uh, he's also been president of the National Association of Basketball Coaches of Canada and uh, is also an international committee member of the National Association of Basketball Coaches USA. So Coach John Doerr is going to be speaking about managing special situations in basketball and please join me in welcoming Coach John Doerr. Thank you, thank you Adam. Nice to be back in Winnipeg. Is this too loud? All right, uh, that's a little bit better. Okay. All right, just, uh, you know, nice introduction. Uh, basically, all that says is I'm old. <laughs> I've been around for a while. I've been coaching through uh, all the stages of my hair. Parted, mostly parted, now mostly departed. So, I mean, w before we get into special situations, we want to talk about a couple of things. One is to always be on time. It's important for us to be on time if we want our athletes to be on time. Uh, and a couple of uh, coaches were talking a little bit before about leadership. And one of our things this year at Concordia is leadership. We've had great leadership over the years from the, the student athletes, and it's been a progression. Anyway, this year we lost five significant players from last year's squad, and one of, one of the growing pains right now is leadership. So I think coaches lead through example, and one of the things is about being on time and always doing what you say you're gonna do. All right, really, really important. We want the athletes to do what we say we're gonna do, or what we ask them to do, but we have to do it ourselves as well. All right, I want to tell you guys, I've been coaching at all levels. Uh, I've coached boys and girls in high school, grades seven and eight. Coached uh, senior teams in high school. I've coached in the CCAA for two years at Danye, where uh, I was the head coach back when I had most of my hair. Um, I've done most of the national teams, other than the senior national team and the uh, Olympic team. Uh, and for the last four years, I've had a taste of what life is like in the NBA. Uh, four years ago, I was invited down to Atlanta as a guest coach with the Atlanta Hawks, and I got to spend a, a, a week there, and uh, I wish I could always live like that. <laughs> it's unbelievable, you know. Uh, First thing you do when you get in there is you, you, you get up in the morning, you know, you, where I stay in, you go to practice, and it's, how would you like your omelet today, coach? So, omelet before practice, yes. This is in the locker room. So, uh, anyway, so we eat, the coaches meeting, practice for a couple of hours. Then the decision is, do we have a steam and a shower before we have lunch in the locker room, or do we have lunch and then a steam and a shower? So it's kind of a nice life that they have. And uh, unlike what we have in, in uh, university or high school in Canada here. And the last three years, I've, uh, I've done some personnel work and scouting for the Knicks. So uh, don't get too exciting. It's not that big a deal. I get invited out to Las Vegas for the NBA Summer League. And they say, well, we're looking for a point guard. Go to this game, this game, this game, and this game. So basically, you sit and watch point guards all day, and you give them your feedback on that. But when I go to Las Vegas, we get to stay at the Wynn Hotel, which is a great hotel. It's got one of those things where you push the button and the blinds open up. It's got the big screen TV on the wall. You go to the health club, it's like going away for a week to a spa. You know, they have this deluge thing that comes down from the ceiling, and you sit there, and it goes on you. And it just, it's, it's great, but it's a... Uh, 
I mean, so I've had some great opportunities. And part of the reason I keep doing it, and last year we brought uh, uh, one of the guys who coaches with us at Concordia, uh, he's a young guy, and the Knicks were training in Saratoga Springs, New York. So I brought him down to the, uh, the, um, the camp, preseason camp. And it was interesting because, you know, he got to ride on the bus with the team. He got to go into the film session with the team. And he's a young guy. And uh, is he here now? Yes, he's over there. Okay. And it was, but one of the reasons why we do it is to learn something. And as we're walking into the uh, thing, and he can tell you it's a true story. If he doesn't tell you, he's fired. <laughs> And well, one of the reasons why we do it is to learn something. But we're walking in there, and all of these guys that Dave met at different camps in the summer saying, how the heck did you get into that? How did you get to go into the, the film session? And, that, and it's it just a great opportunity to learn something new. And I think that's what we're trying to do here today is learn something new. So I have a question for you guys. See how open you are to learning. Does anybody in here smoke? Nobody smokes. Nobody's one honest citizen here. Two, has anybody ever tried smoking? Maybe as a kid. Oh, lots. Okay. Now, I'm not that smart, but the director of Health Canada and the Surgeon General in the U.S., they tell you smoking can kill you. And if you're not going to listen to them, why the hell would you listen to me? I'm just a basketball coach. All right, so one of the things is we have to learn from others and be open to learning. All right, and when you have smart people telling you this could kill you, sometimes you might tend to believe them. I'm only going to tell you about sight out of bounds play or a out of bounds play under the basket. All right, the moral of the story is just be open to learning. Um, one of the other things that we'll talk about is escaping your comfort zone or your box. We, we all, as coaches, what do we do as coaches? We, we teach, we create, we create offenses and defenses, we motivate people, right? And we steal a lot of things from other people, which is fine. That's what, that's what we should be doing. We steal. And hopefully, when you take something from me, you incorporate it into your own philosophy. My philosophy might be different than anybody else here, but develop, it's important to have your own philosophy and to build on that and to take a little bit from everybody else. And one of the things about coaching and that is sometimes we get set in our ways and we do the same thing year after year after year without changing anything. It becomes boring to the athletes and we become too comfortable in our, in our own little box. So I'll just tell you a quick story about my own experience escaping my box. Years ago, I was asked to do a radio show in Montreal on CBC called John Doerr on Amateur Sports. And I had two radio stations asking me to do the show. And I thought it was hot shit. You know, I get two stations asking me to do this stuff. It must be pretty good. I guess it was a pretty good interview. So I go into CBC where he agreed to do it. I go in the first week. And it's you're in this booth, five to seven minutes. And there's nobody else there and nobody else to talk to. And you have to go and talk five to seven minutes. Well, I was so bad. I was so bad. I said to the guy who's responsible for me, my supervisor, I said, help me out. He said, no, 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 you'll be OK. Relax. Well, I listened to the tape. I said, oh my god, I can't do this. I can't do this. He said, relax. I go back the second week. I do it again saying, John, so please fire me. Put me out of my misery. Because you use crutch words. And usually when you do an interview, you answer a question. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty direct. But if you have to talk for five to seven minutes in this little booth and you've never done it before, you say, like, oh, OK, all right. Uh, was that good? Uh, you know, and you sound like a fool. I sounded like a fool. Anyway, it took me four or five weeks till I thought I was acceptable. But I had escaped my box. I did the show for two years, but it, I took my lumps in the beginning. But I got a lot more out of that than I think they got out of me. And I escaped my box, my comfort zone, by
by doing that. I think it's important for all of us to be able to escape our comfort zones. All right, one of my other favorite things, I, I always tell this one is, uh, you know, people, I never say it's my team. This is a pet peeve of mine. I try to be, uh, we use we, us, our, not I or mine. Right? We want the kids to say the same thing. It's ours collectively. Right? Uh, and this is a pet peeve of mine. If coach say, my team did this or my team did that. So in order to make it a we, us, our thing, we let the student athletes become part of the process. And how do we do that? At Concordia, we let them decide curfew time. We let them sometimes decide the dress code. We let them decide uh, who wants to be in a room together. We let them make decisions. Right? They become part of the process. Right? Now, having said that, we learn as little babies to be manipulative. When, you, when you wanna, a baby wants to manipulate the mother, what do they do? They cry. So what do we do as adults? And there are no athletes around here. When we say, what time would you like curfew? 11 o'clock? When you know you want it at 12, you say 11? And they say, well, how about one? Well, we'll compromise, we'll make it at 12. So you get our way, yet they're part of the process. All right? One of the other things that we do at Concordia is we vote on everything. Everything that's not important to me, we vote on. If it's really important to me, there's no vote. We decide. And I said, we, the, co the coaches, decide. So I mean, j just a couple of things to help with team building and leadership. All right. <clears throat> now we're gonna talk a little bit about special situations today. Does anybody have any questions or, or want me to go over anything specific? We're gonna go over out of bounds. Uh, side out of bounds, out of bounds under the basket, side out of bounds. Uh, if you want, we can do a free throw and a last second play at the end of the game, if you like. All right, anybody have anything else you want us to go over? No? All right, we'll start with the out of bounds under the basket. If we could get five white shirts. It was that, yes, yes, I'm enthusiastic. Oh, you want it to be black? Oh, we'll get the black team out of that, too. All right, why don't we go down this end, because I think there's more people on this side here. Now, Coach Crook, wherever he is, he said he was going to watch this. Come on down this end, girls. These are, the, these are the plays that we run during the game. So last time I did this here, Dave Crook had his assistant here taking notes all game, and they wound up, beat, wound up beating us in overtime, I think, yeah. on a bad call by the official. Well, we'll get into officials later on. Any officials here? Good. Get out, get out. All right, come, come, come down here. <coughs> Usually have one of our better passers here taking the ball in bounds. Post player, post player. This is normally the two to three, two to three men here and the point guard back here. Now what we do, and uh, Coach Rosa who's up there too, is, uh, you know, I say we, we steal things and we, we change things around. I believe I started this out of bounds play. And the way I got it was off of a drill that a team was doing in California in the mid 80s, I guess it was. And it was a shooting drill. It was a warm up drill. So this is how I started this thing. And since then, there's been a number of teams over the years, even university teams we play against who use this in one form or another. So what we do on this is we're facing the ball here like this. We're facing here. We screen the screener. So we're gonna say go, we're gonna come up and we're gonna screen here, OK? 
Okay, you're going to come down towards the ball and flare out to the corner. At the same time, you're coming up to screen the defender here, and you're just going in here. This is option one. Now, if they switch on this, here, you're going to step inside of me this way. When you screen, you become an offensive player now. Step in, and you come to the basket here, like this. Option two. Okay, option three, option four. And the person out here, so you look really good standing there. You're going to have to move a little bit. You have to move over towards the basketball here. And you, get, you have to make sure you get open on the side. So let's go through it. We'll walk through it. All right, go ahead. Screen, at the same time, go. Screen the screener, hit her. That's it. Okay. All right, this time we're going to hit the person who screens up there. We're going to get you coming down. All right, now one of the things is we tell our athletes not to face this way here. You always have to be a threat. So you want to be here. If the defender is going to play you this way, you're just going to step inside and we're going to pass the ball directly to you. One of the things which is really, sorry girls, I'm just digressing here for a second. One of the things that we do, which I believe is more difficult to teach in the long run, is we try to get the athletes to understand concepts, right? A conceptual approach to basketball, if you like. And one of the things is we'd say, we're always saying, read the defense, understand what the defense is doing, and you adjust accordingly. You run out of bounds plays, offenses, and that, to get a good shot. But if you understand what the defense is doing, it's a lot easier, and you can make adjustments along the way. So that's why we have the athletes face this way all the time. So if you get a defensive player standing here, what's your name? Karina, Karina will step right inside, get low, and she'll get the ball right on the inside. It should be two or three points. Now, if Karina's standing like this, I know she's only going this way. She's not going to get the ball there. Okay? All right, go ahead. We're going to hit Karina this time. Go. Oh. That's it. Good. Karina, you're allowed to smile when you make a shot. That's it. All right. Now we, we do a quick hit off of this. What's your name? Jordy? Jordy. Okay. This time, Karina's going to screen for Jordy. And what's your name? Isabella's going to go this way. So if we call Jordy on this, what you're going to do is you're going to jab step in, come out to the corner. Karina's going to screen for Jordy. Okay. Jordy. Do you know Jordy? Huh? Do you know Jordy? Now I do. And what's your name? Olivia. Olivia, meet Jordy. Jordy, this is Olivia. Shake hands. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't want you to pass on the ball without knowing him. Okay, we'll say, Jordy, go, go. Well, if you want the ball, you've got to come to the basket. Yeah. We want, we want you here, you've got to set this up. So you jab, step away, and you come off shoulder to shoulder, coming in here like this. Let's try it again. Karina, oh, oh, stop, stop. Karina, you've got to be an offensive player before you're a screener. Good stuff. There we go. That's it. Did you say good pass? All right. Okay, something else we do off of this, if we're looking for a three, Isabella? Yeah. All right, we send Isabella to the corner. We have Karina screening for Jordy. Jordy comes this way. We're looking at Isabella. Okay, and what's your name? Kerry. Kerry's coming over here like this. So the ball goes into Isabella here. What's your name again? Olivia, Olivia steps in. All right, now Karina's going to turn this way. Screen. Once you pass the ball out, the screen. Now Olivia has a, a decision to make. Which way does she want to go off of these screens? 
So most times we're going to go this way. Ball goes back here, hopefully outside the three. Can you make that shot? No? Then get inside the three. Can you make that shot? Good. Yeah, I should have taken one outside the three. Same price, same price for a miss. All right, let's run at it a little quicker. And this is when we're looking, normally when we're looking for a three. Okay, go ahead. You're getting closer. All right, the other thing you can do off of that, if you're not comfortable shooting the ball from out here or you're out a little too far, is Isabella's going to post up on this after she sets the screen. So you're setting the screen out, Olivia goes out, and we post up. And if she's right on the side, we have them post this way and try and seal the player so we can get it in here and go to the hoop. Okay, so we'll hit the post on this time. Because you're 0 for 2 on the shots. Quick, that's it. Out of way, good job. All right, and the last thing we do off of this, okay, stay here. So we run through the regular, which is screening the screener, and we're going to hit carry out there. Okay, let's go through the walk through it. Go ahead. Screener, screener. Okay, nobody's open. Ball's going out to carry. And Olivier goes around this way, off the screen here, and then you're into your half court set. If, you're in, if you have two low posts, you go this way. If you go low high, you might stay up there. All right, and you're into your half court set on offense. All right, now there's a couple of other things you could do off of it. You can throw some lobs, depending on how the defense plays. Uh, one other thing which we do off it, because Kerry's standing out there all alone, we'll set her up for something here. So Olivier, take the ball out. All right, very much like when we called Jordy before, Olivier uh, carries on the ball side. And now we're going to call Kerry. Now Jordy's going to screen, and Corrine is going to screen for Kerry. So Kerry's going to set up the defensive player. So you're going to jab step in here, come off Karina, come up, staggered screen right in here so she can go to the basket. Here like this, and then cut in the hoop here. At the same point, Isabel goes to the corner, and Karina on the second screen is going to turn and open up to the ball here. So let's try it at full speed. If she's open, she's going to be open? Okay, I guarantee you she'll be open. That's it. All right, now let's hit Karina off for the same thing. Okay, good job. All right, you guys can sit down. You're off duty. Good job. Let's have a hand for these guys. <clears throat> All right, any questions on that? All right, one thing it does, it, it gets five people involved. The important thing is to get the guard, the point guard, to move towards the ball, not just to stand there and be a spectator. You have to move and you have to occupy your defender so your defender doesn't help with somebody else. All right? Okay, we'll go next, we'll go to the side out of bounds play. Now this one, I stole from somebody, somewhere, I don't remember where, but I, I'm sure I stole it. Let's get the black team up here. Yes! And Ernie, Dave, if I'm doing anything wrong, feel free to correct me, as usual. <laughs> All right, somebody's taking out of bounds here. Normally the two or the three person. We normally have our best, probably our best athlete, two or three guard out here. Who's the point guard? Me. You? Get over there. Aww. Switch. <laughs> You're the best athlete? Yeah? Oh, all right. All right, post players, two low post players. No, one here and one there. 
All right, now he's facing the ball because you want the ball. All right, now first and foremost, you want to get the ball in bounds. Okay. So if we're open here, what's your name? Brittany. Brittany. If Brittany's open here, we could just give Brittany the ball and get into our offense. If they're overplaying us, all right, what we're going to do is you're going to screen for Brittany here. And again, you have to jab, step away, come off shoulder to shoulder, and you're going to come up and screen here. Okay, coming off shoulder to shoulder. You're flashing now towards the basketball, and we're looking over to Brittany for the slam dunk on the alley pass. <laughs> right? Because you're the best athlete. What, what do you mean, no? All right, so we've got to get everybody moving at once. It's like, so you think you can dance? Everybody has to move at the same time. It's got to be choreographed. Yes, Brittany put a slam dunk on the alley of pass. And if you can't do that, just make the layup. All right, here we go. Ball's in. Good job. All right, that's option one off of that. You say good pass? Good pass. Good pass. All right, option two, we're going to hit the high post. So sometimes after you're running this, they'll just switch in the guard spot. So if I'm guarding, what's your name? Emily. Emily, and Brittany's coming off the screen. We'll just switch like this. So what's your name? Evan. Evan? Yep. Evan. So if Evan sets the screen here like this and Brittany goes off, now we want Evan to flash to the ball as soon as he sets the screen. And what's your name? What? AJ. AJ? The initials, I love initials, they're easy. So AJ's gonna come out here, and what's your name? Tanisha. Tanisha. Tanisha's gonna go off the screen here from AJ. When we screen, we wanna have our shoulders parallel to the person who we're gonna screen for. You guys are math majors, you know what parallel is? And, yeah? Two lines that never touch. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going off here, and we're looking for the bounce pass there. And we've got to get Brittany, when she makes the cut now, to pop out, so to take the defensive help away. All right, let's run it. Go. Flash to the ball. Good. And as soon as she passes you, you follow it to the hoop. All right, go ahead one more time. Okay, good job. All right, clear so far? All right, another one fairly easy. We're going to run the same stuff with, what's your name again? Sorry. Emily, Evan, Emily, and Brittany are going to run the same stuff there on the side to take the defense away, but it's going to be a quick pass from Tanisha to AJ and a handoff. All right, so go to AJ, cut, handoff, good. And that you might run if there's not much time on a 24-second clock, you need a quick shot. Right. The other thing on this is the teams will start to front on defense here because they know that AJ is going to be going out all the time, so they'll front here like this. So what we do in this situation is we have AJ go on screen for Evan. Screen, probably better if you come off low, the side, and then you're coming up to screen here just to change up the uh, defense a little bit. Right? And we can also run a three off of this. If we look for a three-point shot at the end of the game, go ahead down there, AJ. You guys, I know this is a momentous occasion. You're getting out of your box here because you're on opposite sides. You know this position? Yeah? Okay. All right, what we're going to do here is run the screen. The ball is going to go to Evan, who's flashing up. You're going to screen here. If Emily is open, she's going to get the ball for a three right away here. If not, Brittany, who came off over here, is going to set the... Oh, you didn't come up. AJ, come up. Brittany's going down. AJ's here. 
And Tunisia, after she comes off this screen, is going to come here and float out to the open area. So if Emily's not open for the three, Tunisia's going to get the three. Okay, let's run the first one for Emily and the second one for Tunisia. And you have to make the shots. You pass into Evan. Screen. No, it was screen. Come on, then. That's it. You got to get warmed up. Yeah. All right. Let's give it to Emily again. She's feeling kind of bad right now. Let's give it to her. Screen, come off. Look for the three. That's it. I know if we did it again, it'd go in. All right, now we're going to hit Tanisha coming off the screen here, off of AJ's screen. Okay. Try one more time. You've got to come off the screen right away. And you, really, you're floating out across here to the open area. He's passing to you. Screen. Off the screen. That's it. Good shot. Way to go. All right, so that, that's the side out of bounds. Play questions? Would you like me to go over uh, end of game play or a, uh, I don't know how much time I have, 10 minutes? Or on the box out, what we do is, maybe we can do both. Yeah? All right, let's get the black and the white team up here. On a foul shot, AJ's shooting a foul shot. So we have the white team on the inside. Okay, and what we do here at the end of a game, if you want, you can do it any time during the game, is we have Brittany run over and screen Isabella like this, wherever she is, and just turn in front of her. And we have Evan come in here for the rebound. So if you have a bigger person there or somebody who can really rebound the ball, and you want to take one of their persons out, you set a screen on the free throw. All right, so you run across. Brittany runs across to screen Isabella. All right, and that should free up Evan to rebound, and maybe against a smaller person, because bigger people tend to line up together. All right, questions on that? It's fairly simple. The other thing that people don't do on free throws is often the, the uh, team that's shooting, everybody will just step in and try and rebound. I mean, you can jump in and try and get into, right into the middle because of the wide key. Like, if we're just stepping out this way, we're leaving too much space in the middle. So if, if uh, Brittany can get into the middle, she's got a better chance of rebounding the ball. And the other thing on this is if we step into box out, here, and you spin around off of it this way to box out here and go after the rebound. All right? We don't do enough of that. People think oh, the free throw is going in, and we stand there and watch, and if it misses, the inside team usually gets the ball. Anybody who's aggressive and really wants the ball has a great opportunity to rebound with the wide key. All right? We'll give you... An out of bounds play, the length of the court. We'll set up uh, the black team with the ball down here. The white team can go off for a second. Just sit down here. You can take this bench here. Which bench is the, bench is the visiting team bench here? That one. That one? Are we home tonight or visitors? Home. No. We don't know? <laughs> We're home? This will be the winning bench. Lucky to be on this bench. All right, we'll do set up an out of bounds play here. We we'll have the two guards here. All right, we put one forward down under the basket, the other forward over here. 
All right, we're going to have the two guards go. All right, one's going wide this way, and you're going to go wide that way. You're going to flash in the middle. We throw the ball down to Evan right at the three-point line. So it's got to be a baseball pass here. Okay, and one of the things is you've got to be able to back up here. Especially you get a nice gym like this back up. You should see the Concordia gym. It's one of the best in the country. No, I'm only kidding. It's probably the worst in the country. But it's got to be a baseball pass. And you want to hit Evan as he's coming up, moving. So get under the basket, Evan. All right, so here we go. Now you're going to, depending on what you need, if you need a two or a three at the end of the game, if you need a three, both players are stopping at the foul line, I mean outside the three-point line. If you need a, a two, both players can go to the basket. All right, but Evan will make the decision of who's going to get the ball. And Brittany is going to flash in here. Now if Brittany gets the ball coming this way, flashing, We'd like AJ to sprint, once he enters the ball, to, to, uh, Brittany will get it, AJ will sprint down, we'll get it back to him. Okay, let's hit Evan here first. All right, we need a two, we need a two. All right, whoa, 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 whoa. bring it back, bring it back. Too slow, I said we need a two. I didn't say too slow. You guys gotta run. It's the end of the game. You want to win? Good pass. That's it. All right, take it out down that end. Now we need a three. Good recovery, good recovery. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Thanks. How much time? I got one minute? Four minutes? Okay. All right, questions on any of that stuff? And, uh, against the zone, a uh, full court zone or half court zone? Half court? What we do is all right let's set up here sorry who oh, we want to be an offense or defense black offense okay black ball here whites can you come and give us a quick hand quickly black, uh, black ball here this borough ball go four across here all right we normally put our post players inside here or if we have a mismatch tanisha you're not a post player Thank you. Here. What, what kind of zone? 2-3, three, 3-2? Three, what is that? 2-1-2? Two, two. All right. Waits 2-1-2 two, two zone. 2-1-2 two, two zone. Okay, you're here. Jordy, where are you? No, Kerry, where are you? Isabella, you're in the middle? Or where? Okay, you play the guard spot. Just play the guard spot here. You're on defense, Kerry. Are you playing the forward spot? Come over here. All right, like this. But what we try to do, and we've run this a couple of ways. We're running it this way for the first time. Um, and again, I stole this play from uh, Bruce Pearl, a guy at Tennessee, because he was coaching the U.S. team in Israel. And they ran this for a guy named Dan Grunfeld, who played at Stanford. and. It's now playing in Spain. It was one of the last cuts from the Knicks last year. And what they do, what you try and do is just overload the zone here. So if they're in a 2-1-2 and you go four across low like this, who's going to defend this person here? If they put this person out here and they deny this, the ball here, what we do is we have this person here and we just lob the ball in right over here like that because there's space. All right, again, it depends on what Kerry is doing on this. If Kerry goes down this way, and Karini are back, Isabel in the middle here like this, and somebody's got to play him, right? Somebody's got to play him. And we can't get the ball to him here. We can always look over to Evan. 
here, and if they flatten this out here and put this person over here, like this, again, you can lob the ball. If we can't lob the ball, what we do is we screen across, even against the zone, like this, you come in into the middle, here, and you're opening up right in here. All right? And I'll just give you one more. From the, let's get the four, four people on the offense high. Foul line extended. The defense come up. No, the, the forward's there, 2-1-2. Two, two. All right, and what we do on this is we send the, the ball side first into here. We like AJ to occupy Isabella just for a second. At the same time, you're making the cut in here. And then, depends on what they do defensively here, you can float to the open area here for a shot. Or we can get the ball inside. Or possibly get the ball right here in the middle and get a shot. The weak side, if you don't throw the pass right away across, the weak side comes up and becomes the safety on that. Does that answer the question there? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, just one last thing. <clears throat> I have to read you this thing that I got. And some of you have probably heard it already. But when I heard it the first time, I was kind of blown away by it because it's a true story. And the guy who I stole it from is a guy named Morgan Wooten. And I don't know if you guys know Morgan Wooten. He's a high school basketball coach from Washington, D.C. And uh, we were both doing this. It was a corporate thing. We were speaking together at this event. And... Like Morgan Wooten's about 80 years old, and at this event they had Bill Cower, who used to coach the Pittsburgh Steelers. They had Raymond Bork, Katrina Lemaydon, and a bunch of other people. And I tell you, Morgan Wooten just blew people away with what it is. So this is a true story. Some of you might have heard it before. And one of the things, you know, you teach the athletes. You try and talk about respect, respect for your teammates, respect for your opponents. And we often say, look both ways, you know. Be nice to the person next to you because you never know when you're going to need his or her help. And, you know, someday Mary might be the CEO of a company and, you know, Susan needs a job and might be able to help. So, again, I stole this, and I'm admitting it, from Morgan Wooten, who I'm sure stole it from somebody else. <clears throat> so it goes like this. It says, his name was Fleming, and he's a poor Scottish farmer. One day, while trying to make a living for his family, he heard a cry for help coming from a nearby bog. He dropped his tools and ran to the bog. There, mired to his waist in black muck, was a terrified boy, screaming and struggling to free himself. Farmer Fleming saved the lad from what could have been a slow and terrifying death. The next day, a fancy carriage pulled up to the Scotsman's sparse surroundings. An elegantly dressed nobleman stepped out and introduced himself as the father of the boy, Farmer uh, Farmer Fleming had saved. I want to repay you, said the nobleman. You saved my son's life. No, I can't accept payment for what I did, the Scottish farmer replied, waving off the offer. At that moment, the farmer's own son came to the door of the family house. Is that your son, the nobleman asked? Yes, the, father, the farmer prou replied proudly. I'll make you a deal. Let me provide him with a level of education my own son will enjoy. If the lad is anything like his father, he'll no doubt grow to be a man we will both be proud of. And that he did. Farmer Fleming's son attended the very best schools and in time graduated from St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in London, England. He went on to become known throughout the world as the noted Sir, Ar Ar Sir Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin. Years afterward, the same nobleman's son who's, who was saved from the bog was stricken with pneumonia. What saved his life this time? Penicillin. The name of the nobleman, Lord Randolph Churchill, his son's name, Sir Winston Churchill. A really moving story, and uh, I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. We're going to have a quick, uh, oh, my mic's not working. Am 
Am I off, Adam? <laughs> I'm off. You're on. I'll just think your mic and use that. All right, thanks, Coach. We're going to take a 10-minute break. We're going to get back here at uh, 2.45 with our next presenter, Sean Swartz. Uh, we'll do some door prizes then. So let's thank again John, uh, Coach John Doerr for his time this afternoon.